Hello, this is Sandra Osterbaris bringing you a few words of Bible from the heart of biblical Israel. This week's Torah portion is Noah and Noah, and it's about Noah and it's about the flood. And of course, these are well-known stories. Um, I want to focus on chapter nine. This is after the flood is over. Noah comes out. And essentially what we have is creation story, chapter two. Uh, start all over again. Um, because God has destroyed everything through the flood and destroyed all mankind and all the animals uh, and all the birds and everything. Only what is in that ark survives, uh, with the exception of the fish, who I assume survive because they can swim in the flood. But everything else, um, you know, in that ark becomes the new microcosm of the new world. And Noah comes out, and he's, he's the first commandment that God says to him uh, is, uh, first we have in the beginning of chapter 9, God blessed Noah and his sons, and he said to them, be fertile and increase and fill the earth. Um, the first order of business, Noah, get moving, make people, have children, build again a world of people. Okay, man is not supposed to remain alone. It is man's responsibility to populate the world. We, last week, we discussed the necessity of, of man to be creative and to work with God's tools to do good things in the world and, and to create new things and, and advance the world. And here we see that the bottom line of all of that, the way we start the first building block is by having children, bringing more people into this world so that these people can then do what they're supposed to do and, and look after the world and, and continue to develop it. And um, then we have God uh, entering into a covenant uh, with Noah. And uh, in this case, I would say the covenant is really not, it's referred to as a covenant, but it's more a one-sided promise uh, where God says that he will, he's entering in, into a covenant with Noah, representing all of mankind. Okay, and he's promising he will never again uh, bring a flood and he will never again destroy all of humanity. So that's a very, very important covenant. And, um, and, and then, of course, he says that the rainbow is the sign of this covenant. And we know that every time it rains, um, the sun comes out, then you see a rainbow. And that reminds us of God's promise that never again will be there'll be a rain so intense uh, or any other type of destruction so intense that all of humanity will be destroyed. Some people will be killed. We can have damage that God never promised never to bring damage or to kill some people, but he will never again destroy humanity. There will never again be a restart. Noah is the last chance. And I think it's it's very, and, and he makes it very clear. It's not just with Noah, it's with all of humanity. In verse 17, that God said to Noah shall be the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all people that are on this earth. Okay, so so that's a very powerful statement of God. And if, and if that's how it ends, I think it's important to remember how it begins. Be fruitful and multiply. Have children. And I think these two things come together to create what I see as the foundation of, of the world and the foundation of humanity. Our responsibility, I would say, even though God, the covenant seems to be one-sided in that it's just God making a promise and Noah doesn't have to make any counter promises. It doesn't seem to be conditional. God's promise is unconditional. I will never again destroy humanity. But if we take these two together, there's an implicit obligation on the part of Noah and on the part of humanity to populate the world. God says, you keep bringing new people, new children, new babies into this world. I will never again destroy that world. And when I see this and I see these two ideas juxtaposed in such a meaningful way here in Genesis chapter nine, I can't help but think how mistaken people are today um, there, there's no question we must be concerned about our environment. God created this world and he gave it to us in trust. We as human beings are responsible for, for protecting the world and, and not destroying the world. So 
I think the concern for environment is very important. Um, how exactly we go about uh, preserving the, the environment and and um, and reversing perhaps some of the damage that had been done until until now, I have no idea. Uh, you know, I'm happy to leave that to scientists and, and, and it is complicated, no question. But on the other hand, there are those people today who are saying, because they are concerned for the future of the world, they don't want to have children anymore. And to me, there is nothing more outrageous and more anti-Bible than a statement like that. The world may suffer things, and we are responsible for doing our best, but God has promised he will never again destroy the world. And we must hold on to that promise. And at the same time, we must continue to have faith in that promise and have children because that's our responsibility. Part of our responsibility to sustain the universe is to ensure that there are people. God created the universe and the crown, crowning glory of his creation was humanity. And he wanted humanity because he wanted humanity to protect the world and to serve him through the world. And so we, one of the most important things we must be doing in fulfilling our role in sustaining the universe is to bring forth generations and to bring forth children and to continue humanity. Have a wonderful Shabbat, a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoyed that video. And we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below as well as on the notification bell. And that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.